We have outer layers, our name, we have our story. Hi, how do you do? Where are you from? What do you do for a living? And so on. We have what we call the ego or the mind. That's the one that keeps us up at night. You know, we should, should do this, we should have done that. And we have kind of a subconscious layer, okay? But as you guys are learning, when you dive down inside yourself, you actually come to, there's, there's a lot more things in there. The dividing line here is that the stuff inside the black line is the stuff that sticks around after you die and before you're born. So we call that the soul. And deepest inside of us is what I call essence. And it's represented by an eyeball. Deep inside of you is something that's just watching the universe go by. It has no personality, it has no memory, it has no gender, it has no opinions. It's just watching, okay? That's the ultimate like essence in, inside of you. Did anyone see eyeballs in their visions? Okay. Yeah, sometimes when you see a whole bunch of eyeballs, my interpretation is that you are being shown the essences around you. So you're kind of feeling that everybody is in this together, watching the universe go by, all right? And essence is, is pretty trippy because it seems like it's one thing, but it's actually sort of everything. It's really one eyeball, but it can appear as many eyeballs, okay? So the way we see ourselves often is like this, that if we're talking to people, we're connecting. If we're alone in our brain, we're less connected. If we're meditating, we're disconnecting, right? And so we think that as we go inside of ourselves, we're gonna come and kind of narrow down to a point. But spirit says it's very different than that. When we are expressing our differences by interacting, we're actually disconnecting. And when we begin to go inside of ourselves, we get closer and closer to the essence, which is this feeling of connection. Did anyone feel connected when they were on the medicine, like with the room or the earth or things around you, right? It's because you're going inside yourself. And you think, oh, I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna find out who I really am. And what happens is you go in there and it's the whole universe. And you're like, oh boy, I'm a little more than I thought I was. <laughs> All right, so the evolution of the soul, which is this thing, this eyeball, journeys from the beginning of time this is the Big Bang down here. Everyone knows what the Big Bang is, right? Ball of light blew up, space dust everywhere, swirl, planets, stars, galaxies, all of the stuff out there in the night sky. And then what happens? Eventually, the moon falls into the earth. Well, don't worry about this, it's not tomorrow. The moon falls into the earth, the earth falls into the sun, the sun falls into the center of the galaxy, all the galaxies fall back together, and at the other end of time, of the life of the expanding universe, we have the big crunch. That's when, okay? So we start in a giant ball of light, and we end in a giant ball of light. No matter which way you look down the tunnel, there's a ball of light at the end of the tunnel, okay? Does this kind of make sense? All right. So if you think about it in terms of the physical universe, Everything blows up and scatters around and then everything gets sucked back together by gravity, all right? But essence is not physical things. Essence is, up, is the observer, it's the conscious awareness of the universe. There is a force that pulls essence back together. It's like gravity and it's called love, all right? So love is the force that pulls conscious awareness back together at the, through the journey of the universe. And as your bit of essence journeys from the beginning of the universe to the end of the universe, well, at the end of this universe, I should say, right? It collects kind of a story. And that story sort of filters down from here into here and is stored in what we would call the soul, all right? So as you begin to go inside of yourself and get to these places where you feel connection, you begin to find out things that your essence has already been through. How many of you saw ancestors, past lives, okay, things like that? This is you visiting kind of inside of your soul the collection of the things that you have been in the past. All right, you good? Questions? Okay, so let's find out kind of what are the steps on the journey of the soul. 
So just like the physical world, the the point the, um, the universe, the, the ball of light blew up, and the first thing it did was create the earth in a mineral phase. Remember for a long time, this is your high school like bi you know biology and stuff. For a long time the earth was a spinning block block ball of rock and water and lava, and then life formed. So during the time when the earth was just rock, water, gas, and fire, okay, the elements were your primary form of consciousness of being around. There is an old Indian medicine, which is Ayurveda, which is, and some other ones as well, which are based on what kind of person are you? Are you more of a water person? Are you more of a fire person? Are you more of an earth person? Rock, so on, get air, okay? What that's saying is that as your core self journeyed through that era, it sort of picked up a predominant flavor that's kind of written in your soul, okay? So you could be predominantly earth or rock or water or air. Um, then you became a plant, okay? Normal, that's what happened on the earth. There were the little microbes and then it turned into algae and then the plants grew in the eye jungles, and then the plants developed into animals. Okay, so for a long time we had, what, the dinosaurs, and then we had the other animals, and so on. And then the humans showed up, all right? So, you've been going through this stage. How many of you saw an animal in your visions? An animal that seemed like it was kind of guiding you, okay? That's a pretty good amount. Welcome to your animal spirit guide, right? Can I, can I, if you, if you'd like, can you tell me what they were? A snake. A snake. Okay, that's the one that's a little different. <laughs> <laughs> the snake is Mother Ayahuasca. I've actually written it right here. Snake. All the other animals are your spirit animal guides. <laughs> the snake is Mother Ayahuasca. How many of you saw the snake? Okay, quite a few. Good. Any other animals besides the snake? Yeah. Jaguar. Jaguar is very common, I know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Praying mantis. Praying mantis. Oh, he's actually kind of one of the celestial surgeons. He's usually involved in a bunch of tools. Chicken, chicken. That's it. An alligator. Wow. Very interesting. Like a panther. A panther. Okay. So what happens is we are in the human realm and we've been doing this for quite some time. We've been reincarnating as humans quite some time. Humans, in kind of the overall view of things, humans are the ones who are dealing with the choice between service to others and service to self. So humans, I don't have to tell you guys this too much, humans are a little sketchy. Okay. <laughs> animals are super reliable because they come, this is what we call duality, because we're choosing, right? Animals come outside of duality, so it's very common that your first spirit guide be your spirit animal. They're very reliable and they will help you find your way through the spirit world. One really cool thing you can do is if you've seen your alligator or, or your panther or something, if you see it again, is get a name. You know, you can call it just alligator, come help me. But if you're lost inside the vision space, you know, you don't know what you are, you don't know what you're doing, you can call up that spirit and it will help guide you, okay? Yeah. Um, what does it mean if, so in one stage of my adventure last night, I was an animal? So, what is you were an animal. I was. Right, which one? could have happened somewhere else. Your soul, okay, so the earth, and actually all of our reality is about this big, okay? To put this a little bit in perspective, and that's even exaggerated. So there are lots of other realities in all of these levels, okay? And it's, I don't know the numbers, but let's just say barely the majority of us 
came from here that are going up here on the earth. Okay, so we might have ancestors who were, you know, dinosaurs or something like that, but some of us could have very easily gone off to here and then back to here and then over to here. It's a very organic, complicated thing. So if it's not something that you recognize from the earth, it may not have been from the earth. Right? But whatever it is, yeah, I'm not to sit on this. Oh, you're going to have to sit on this. And if, if, okay, fundamental guiding principle, right? When you're moving in the flow this way, you feel love in your heart. In the spirit, in, in, in our world, like I said, humans are sketchy. You meet someone, what a great guy. Six months later, all your money's gone, your girlfriend's gone, your car's gone, right? So, but in the spirit world, your heart, your feelings are a much more reliable guide for you. So when you, when you feel like a brown furry animal, or when you see a brown furry animal, check yourself, check inside your heart. If you feel love, that thing is probably your spirit guide. And then you can open up dialogue with it. If you feel fear or afraid, then we'll talk about that in a little while, what you can do. Actually, what you do then is you call for your animal spirit guide. Come help me, whatever this thing is in front of you. All right? So that's kind of a navigation tool. Uh, one that's kind of throw in a question that's relevant, but a little bit of a, a digression here. Uh, if you've read any of the books by uh, uh, Jeremy Nardi, he talks a lot about uh, the odds that life could have occurred on Earth spontaneously. And he talks about even the complexity of a single protein let alone a DNA molecule, let alone a one-celled animal, that we've got you know, carbon and oxygen and whatever else kind of uh, atoms bumping around together in the primordial soup. He says the odds that those could have come together to form even a simple protein are 10 followed by 260 zeros to one, which is more than all the atoms in the known universe. So if we didn't come here you know, by some kind of chance bumping of atoms together, how did we get life on this planet? I think he did it. You remember you had a vision? It was you, right? Yeah. The light in the chest, and the light flowing out, and all the things growing all of a sudden. So there, um, I don't mean to pick on you, I just thought it was kind of funny you're sitting next to each other. So uh, we're going to get there, but of course, in this evolution, there are other things up here, right? Don't, don't stop. Um, I'll see if I can keep this all together. All right, so rock, tree, horse, human, all right? A rock does not have, a rock is conscious, but it doesn't have a lot of consciousness, okay? A rock has one thought its entire existence, and that is just, I exist, right? That's actually quantum physics, because what brings it out of the soup of probability is its own observation of itself. Okay, so then the next thing up is a tree. A tree does not have a lot of thoughts. A tree doesn't even have a brain, really. It's just kind of a chemical system. But trees do like know when it's night, when it's day. They, their roots search for water. Their leaves turn towards the sun. They live, they reproduce, they die. So a tree has, let's give it, 100 thoughts every day. All right? The sun's up, the sun's down. There's water in the ground, that pesky squirrel, okay? Then an animal, let's think about a horse. How many thoughts does a horse have in the day? Oh, is it time for hay yet? Oh, is it time for hay yet? You know? So a horse might have a thousand, a horse might have a thousand thoughts in a day. Human beings have something like 75 to 100,000 thoughts every day, all right? Here's the thing, don't stop there. What comes next? What's a being like that has a million or a billion thoughts in a day? Imagine a being that can work with every single one of you every time you're in ceremony, simultaneously appearing as a snake, as whatever she needs to be with each of you, not only here in this room, but all over the world at the exact same time. This is a being of phenomenal consciousness and awareness. This is Madre Ayahuasca. So these beings that have millions and billions of thoughts every second, they are up in these ranges. And they are the ones, well, some of them are called cedars. And what they do is they go out into the physical universe 
and they make possible the kinds of things that lead to 